Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionalis. This is my second video on rheumatology. Today, let's talk about learning the basics. In the previous video, I've mentioned that rheumatology is all about pattern recognition. Let me discuss in brief the topic of autoimmunity. Normally, your immune system recognizes the self. It only attacks foreign invaders, but it keeps the self sane. However, autoimmunity is with antibodies that react with the self antigens. By the way, all people have autoimmunity in their body. The problem happens with autoimmune disease. These are antibodies that react with self antigens causing pathology. It's similar to eating food that's not healthy, okay? It's contaminated with bacteria. Does that mean that every single patient will get a disease? The answer is not. Your body has an amazing defense mechanism. Hopefully, you will not get sick. Some people will get but the majority will not. This, this is similar to this. Every single person has autoimmunity, but the minority of people, they have autoimmune diseases. Similar to cancer cells. All of us have mutant cells in their body, cells with DNA mutations, but you have very good system called the tumor suppressor gene, such as P53, that keeps cancer in check and destroys these cells. Cancer happens when everything fails. We can classify rheumatologic diseases to non-inflammatory and inflammatory. Non-inflammatory such as osteoporosis, osteoarthritis, and fibromyalgia. Inflammatory such as rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, seronegative spondyloarthritis, plus gout. Let's review some anatomy. Here is a bone and here is another bone between which there is a joint. The joint has a synovium and the synovial fluid. The synovium has an outer layer which is called the joint capsule and an inner layer which is synovial lining cells. Let's go to the bone. The bone has two types of cartilage. The articular cartilage which articulates with the other bone and the epiphyseal plate which is also cartilage. Let's get to the shaft of the bone. It has cortical bone, which is also known as compact bone, and it's very strong. Also here at the metaphysis, we have cancellous or trabecular bone, and it provides flexibility. Together, these are called lamellar bone. Let's get a section of the bone and put it under the microscope. You will see the famous haversion system. You have type 1 collagen, osteocytes, which are bone cells and blood vessels in the middle. If you take a section from this trabecular bone, you will find osteoclasts eating your bone, osteoblasts building your bone, and osteocytes in between. So the way I remember it is osteoblast, they build bone, and osteoclast, they cut down bone. Bones are either lamellar or woven. These are the strong normal bones. The woven are not normal. They may be normal in children or they may be a pathology. Lamellar, the normal adult bone, can be compact or trabecular. The woven bone can be immature or pathological, immature such as embryonic skeleton and fracture callus, pathological such as osteosarcoma and fibrous dysplasia. There are three different types of joint, fibrous, fibrocartilaginous, and synovial. The fibrous joint, the range of motion is minimal, such as the sutures of your skull. Very, very limited, minimal motion. Here, the fibrocartilaginous, limited, more than the fibrous joint, such as the pubic symphysis, they can move and widen during childbirth, intervertebral disc, costochondral junction, and the sacroiliac joint. Synovial, the widest range of motion, 
such as most extremities joints, your arms, your legs, costovertebral and the temporomandibular joint. Notice that costovertebral joints are synovial while costochondral junctions are fibrocartilaginous. Again, bone, bone joint has synovial fluid. It acts as a lubricant, like the engine oil in your car. It's a lubricant, like the brake oil, every oil in the car. It has many functions, of course, but it's a lubricant. I'm talking about car lubricants, okay? And where does the lubricant come from? Any fluid in your body comes from your plasma. Where does urine come from? From the plasma. Where does saliva come from? From the plasma. Where do your precious tears come from? Of course, from the plasma. And the synovial fluid is no exception. Therefore, we have three notes here. The first note is, if you have high levels of uric acid in the plasma, you will have high levels of uric acid in the synovial fluid. This is common in cases of gout. Two, if you have a problem in the plasma such as a generalized or systemic inflammation, it can go to the synovial fluid leading to synovitis and arthritis because arthritis means inflammation of the joint and the synovium is part of the joint. Perfect. What's number three? If you have septic arthritis of the knee, it can spread to the plasma. That's why septic arthritis is an emergency. Let's talk about some vocabulary here. Arthritis, inflammation of joints or any joint structure. Enthesitis is different. It's inflammation of the enthesis. These are the sites where the tendon or a ligament attach to a bone. Enthesitis is common in reactive arthritis. Don't ever forget that. Enthesitis example include Achilles tendonitis. So, monoarthritis, inflammation of one joint. Oligoarthritis, two to four joints, because oligo means few. Polyarthritis, five or more, because poly means many. Arthritis, again, inflammation of joints, but arthralgia is just joint pain. Alja means pain. How to differentiate between them? Of course, there are lots of stuff, but don't forget the physical exam and the cardinal signs of inflammation in the good old days of pathology. Redness, hotness, swelling, pain, loss of function. And since the name of my channel is Medicosis Perfectionalis, it's a Latin name, of course, let me remind you of the Latin names of these cardinal signs. So you have ruber, calor, tumor, dollar, functulescent. If you'd like to remember all of these cardinal signs of inflammation, just think of a teenager seeing a beautiful girl and use your imagination. Okay, so arthritis, cardinal signs of inflammation. Arthralgia, no cardinal signs of inflammation, except for pain, of course. Extra-articular manifestations. Some rheumatological diseases have symptoms outside of the joint, such as rheumatoid arthritis with episcleritis, carpal tunnel syndrome, pericarditis, reactive arthritis with arthritis, urethritis, and conjunctivitis, a famous triad, Jogren syndrome, dry eye, dry mouth, lupus, skin rash, and renal insufficiency because lupus damages your kidney. The skin rash is the famous Mailer butterfly rash. The mnemonic for reactive arthritis is can't see, can't pee, can't climb a tree. That's it for today. Please don't forget to subscribe. I'm continuing this rheumatology series. And until next time, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. Thank you so much for watching.